Hi everyone, in this lecture we will be going over the SELECT statement. The SELECT statement in, is one of the four very fundamental statements of uh, SQL language or any database for that matter. And they, com they are comprised of the CRUD operations that we call them CRUD. You might have heard this term CRUD, C-R-U-D, or you might have worked with it before. We are going to go over that in just a sec. Uh, before actually going over the syntax for writing uh, SQL queries, I need to clarify some stuff that whatever it is that you want to do with a database, it requires writing queries. Those queries could comprise of uh, multiple statements. Each statement could have one or more clauses. The most fundamental statements in SQL are the SELECT statement, the UPDATE statement, the INSERT statement, and the DELETE statement. These four statements, they make the CRUD, this entire CRUD functionality, they make it come to life or they bring it to life. And as a best practice, it is uh, considered that you need to, uh, you need to consider writing uh, all your SQL queries, all your SQL commands in uppercase. Uh, well, actually SQL is a case insensitive language which means it doesn't really matter if you write them uppercase or lowercase or whatever. It doesn't matter. But it is considered a best practice to write SQL commands in uppercase. So before we can write queries, we need some sort of window in which we can write our queries. And uh, then our queries will be executed against a certain database so here we have some databases but i do not want to work with these i want to i want to work with another kind of database that i've provided you here so i need to tell you some a little bit about how this course is structured because this is a course within the python course so these are the promised courses that I told you in the course introduction that you're going to have many more courses within the Python course. So these are like a course within a course, something like that. And uh, uh, so because I cannot provide a folder within a folder as the curriculum or like uh, a directory within a directory, what, I, what I've done is... The, this part of the name, the SQL Essentials course, this is the name of the course, and then you have this little dash, and then you have basic SQL syntax and querying data. This is the name of that specific chapter that we are working with, because it is a complete course. There are almost, there are, uh, I think there are nine chapters. I've not actually completed them yet, but I'm working, I'm still working on them. Uh, there are a lot of chapters. There is a lot of, there is literally a ton of content. In SQL so this is like a complete SQL course uh, or structured query language course and this part again this part is the name of the chapter all the lessons belong to this part to this basic SQL syntax and querying data this is the database that we are going to work with HelaliDB I've created the, this database beforehand and we are, we are basically going to execute it to just have a database so we can implement our queries against it. And by the end of this course, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you, or I'm going to teach you how you can create databases as well. But that is like a relatively advanced topic. So I've uh, postponed it towards, to, towards the end of the course. It's not like at the end, it is towards the end of the course. So we need to insert this database into our SQL and we need to run it so it creates the, a database. This file basically contains SQL commands that create a database. Now, the ways that you can open this is you can open it with a text file use, use, with Notepad like any other text file. So if you click on it, here it is. So these are all the SQL commands that are going to create our database for us. You can open it with that. You can open it with uh, VS Code as well, where we have this. There you go. So this is uh, how it is going to look in VS Code. Obviously, we are not going to work with it like that. And then you can import it in your SQL as well, which is the, the, the approach that we're looking for. So first off, we need to create a schema. And if you just click on this, you need to provide the name of the schema. So I'm just going to say Halali underscore DB. And from bottom right, just hit apply. This is the uh, command that is uh, 
uh, that we cr that we write to be able to create a schema. Now I could have grabbed an empty uh, SQL query tab and written this, but because this is really advanced, I just went with the like graphical representation of creating a schema. If you just apply it, it says now you can execute SQL statements. There we go. So now let's close that. There we go. It is the Halali DB. It is empty. There is nothing. There is no table. So you can see that we don't have any drop down option. And if you reload it again, we don't have anything. Now we are going to insert our database from here. This is our Halali DB database. We are going to open it up. So this is our entire database that we are going to work for um, for the majority of this course. And uh, let me come down here. Now, if I go ahead and before actually running this, this requires a database to be selected. So this, all of this, this commands, all of these commands, so they can be uh, executed against that database. The way that this works is you need to select a database and all the subsequent queries will be executed within the context of that database. Uh, what I mean is like you cannot write queries in the like in th on thin air like on air and you expect them to be uh, executed against something you need to provide like a reference point what this query belongs to what so you need to you need to provide that reference point. that reference point is the Halali DB so I'm just going to double click on it and then I'm going to run this it is running so you can see in the bottom in the output it is still running and there we go it is not now refresh the schemas when you refresh them you can see we have a drop down option and these are all our tables so we basically created seven tables yeah three and three seven and if you click whenever you hover on any of these tables you're going to see three options so i'm going to get rid of this uh, window let's close that so if you click on the first one, this is going to provide you with the info about that specific table. Uh, if you click on the second one, it is going to show you the settings for that, which we're going to go over uh, towards the end of this uh, course. Settings. Uh, these settings, they basically specify the limitations or constraints that you put on, uh, on the columns of your table. And the third one is going to show you your table. So this is our table. And this table is extracted from this Halali DB database using this SQL command. So we write SQL commands to extract data from a certain database. Now this Halali DB, this is actually a database. It is a very valid database. Now we write SQL commands to extract data from database. Uh, to update any uh, record within a database or delete any record or row or like uh, insert new records into database. We can do a lot more, but these four are the fundamental operations that we can perform on database. So the, here we have three columns. So each one of these is a column. The name of this table is countries. So we have multiple tables. We could have one or more tables, as many as you, as you need. Within each table, you have columns and you have you have columns and you have rows. So this is the representation of an Excel spreadsheet, right? So you can see that it looks like a table the representation of tabular data, which resembles a CSV or an Excel file. And each row is called a row or a record. If you want to like get it really into technical stuff, it is it is called a record. So these are records. All the records belonging to one column, they're called values for that column. So columns have, they have values, col columns have values. A table has columns and records. So this is how we call them. And uh, I think we are done here. So we have created our database now what i would like to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to create a tab to execute sql queries and um, the way that i'm going to um, outline these lectures is the name of the lecture is going to be at the top so we have the select statement i'm going to zoom in you can zoom in using control and plus i think it's command and plus on mac i'm not sure you can uh, take a look at that you can hit uh, uh, hold control and like um, using the wheel the wheel of the mouse you can also zoom in and zoom out like this. see there we go 
So this is going to be the name of the lecture, the select statement. And this statement is commented out. There are, because this is the first lecture, I need to tell you all these preliminary stuff and get it out of the way so we can get started with writing SQL queries. Whenever you do double dashes space, that is going to provide you with a comment. Unlike any other programming language or unlike any other programming languages that you might have studied or the Python that we have studied, whenever you create a comment, by default, it is not going to be executed. But if you select a portion of that comment and click on this lightning bolt, you will execute that selected port. Unlike Python, whenever you comment out a code in Python, there is no way for you to execute it unless you comment it in back, comment it back in again. But in SQL, even if it is a comment, when you select it and hit in, and, and when you um, run it or execute it, it is going to be executed. And the rest of, if, for example, you have 1000 SQL queries, none of them will be executed, only the selected part. And if you don't have any selection, the entire document or the entire C query tab is going to be executed except for comments. So we have single line comments using double dashes. We have multi-line comments, which, which uh, is exactly like these comments for CSS, which we are going to talk about. So you can write multiple stuff here, multi-line comments. So just something that I needed to tell you so and get it out of the way. The next thing that I would like to talk about is how these files are actually structured. So you can see that there is a star. I'm not really sure if you can see. It's a SQL file 3 and on top of it there is a star. It means that we have not ch saved our changes. Now if I hit Control S and if I try to save it, you can see that another window opens up. And the way that I will be saving these is I'm just going to say 2 to uh, the select because it is a best practice to write SQL commands in uppercase that's how I'm going to name the files as well so I'm gonna say statement and when I save it you can see that now the name of the file has changed it says to the select statement and we don't have that star anymore because we saved our file there we go so this is how I will be giving you these uh, files and um, uh, you're going to have, for each specific chapter, you're going to have multiple files. The way the file structure is going to be the same as uh, we have done so far, so many chapters, more than 20 chapters for Python. So each chapter is going to have its containing and its relevant lectures. And you can open up these lectures. For example, if you don't want to open them using the uh, MySQL, you can just right click and go open it with Notepad. And if I bring this here, now you can see that this is something that we have written here so far. And if I close this, for example, if I say um, this is the first lecture, you can see we, we got that star again. So I'm just going to control S. It, it has saved it. Now, if I open this up with Notepad, there we go. This is the first lecture. So if you just want to take a look at these SQL commands or codes that we have talked about, you can open it up with Notepad or if you want to work with it, uh, now, the first way is opening up with Notepad. The second way is uh, you can open it up with VS Code, which I've shown you. But what about SQL? How can you open this lecture up in SQL? So now let's see. You can see that it is closed. You are going to click on this. It is going to open a, uh, a SQL script, which is stored in a file. Just grab that. So this is going to be the second icon from the left. This, The one that has this folder, little folder icon beneath it. Just open it and there we go. So this is how we can use extra, uh, lecture files. And this is how all of the lectures will be um, structured. Now, before moving forward, I need to show you one more thing and then we are going to get started. Well, this is actually a part of the lecture, so it is not like a new thing here. And that thing is, uh, whenever you're working with a database, you need to select that database. So your SQL queries are uh, executed within the context of that database. What do I actually mean by this? So before showing you how you can do that, I'm just going to write example one because we are going to name all of our examples. And before actually writing example one, I'm going to create a multi-line comment and I'm going to name out the CRUD operations. Operations. So 
CRUD uh, stands for create, read, update, and delete. These are the most basic operations that you can perform with any database or on any database. And these, compri these comprise of the most fundamental stuff a database can do. And the C stands for create. And then let me provide some space. Let me copy that part. The, uh, the R stands for read. Let me go ahead. There you go. The U stands for update. I just want it to be structured. And the D stands for delete. Let me put them here. So for each of these operations, uh, we have different SQL commands, which are the most basic SQL commands, and we are going to cover them first. So to be able to create, we are going to have the insert statement. This is going to create records for us for uh, SQL. So this is going to create it. And I'm just going to copy that, put it here, put it here, and put it here. Okay. Uh, the command that is going to read data from the database is the select statement. This just gives you an overview of what, what to expect from upcoming lectures. The update uh, it is, we do have an update command, and, insert, uh, and delete is going to be just basically the delete command. So to be able to implement the CRUD functionality, we are going to use the insert statement, the select, the update, and the delete statements. These are the four basic fundamental operations our database can do. That's why we are going to cover them first. And now we are going to start with the select, which is going to read from a database. Then we are going to go over the insert, which is going to insert records into a database. Then update, which is going to update records from a database. And then delete, which is going to delete records from a database. So th this is what we are going to implement in the upcoming lectures. And now let's use the, uh, let's go over the actual SQL squ uh, query. So first off, you're going to write select. In front of the select, you need to write the column names that you want to retrieve from a certain database. So if you pass in only, like if you pass in star, it means that you want to grab all the columns. Then wh which from which table do, and do you want to grab the columns? Because columns, of course, they belong to a specific table. So I'm going to select, let's come down here. I'm going to select the countries. So I'm going to say countries. So from the countries column, I want to select countries table. I want to select all the columns. And every SQL statement, keep in mind, not SQL clause, SQL statement must be terminated with a semicolon. Otherwise, you're going to have an error. Now, this, this is going to throw an error, of course. But that error is important for me to make a point. Whenever you run this, let's see what is the error. Uh, if you come here, it says table blogs.countries does not exist. Why does it say blogs.countries? Because we have clearly said that we want to grab this countries within the Halali DB. The reason that it says that is because the blogs table is, is uh, selected and it is looking within there. When a, whenever you impl you want to implement SQL queries, you need to select the database. The database is selected whenever it is in Bolt, so blogs. And within the blogs, you can see we only have tasks and topics. So we don't have countries. That's why there is an error. So how can we select this HalaliDB? You can select it by double click on the, d the database name, or you can write another SQL query, which, I, which is the actual preferred way. And you can say use, which is a SQL command. Then you're going to write the name of the database. So you're going to say halali underscore db. And then you have to terminate it with a semicolon. And now if you run this, you can see that we have selected the, all the columns. So now let's take a look at the countries. You can see we have three columns. And in here, we have retrieved three columns from this table. Congratulations, you have created your very first SQL command. Now, there are a couple of things that I need to mention here. The first thing is that you always need to specify your database. If you don't, you're going you're gonna to have some um, errors, as you saw. And the second thing, which is the most important thing, is you need to terminate your SQL commands with a comma.
because then if you do not terminate it all the lines coming after it will belong to that statement because the use statement doesn't have any select clause or a from clause then if we remove this save this file run it we are going to get an error why because it says you have an error in your sql syntax why because we have not terminated this statement this select statement is not a part of this so we need to terminate it again each statement could have one or more clauses so this statement has two clauses a select clause and a from clause but this statement has only one clause the use halali db clause now it is also considered a best practice for you for your convenience to uh, separate your sql queries by like line breaks for example if you come here if you take a look at this one you can see select star and select clause and the from clause both of them are on one line this is good it's okay but if you're new to this it is important for you to pr just provide an enter just provide a line break this makes reading this query much easier so this is this is how actually I'm going to go forward for most of the times and uh, okay so this is our very first example then I'm gonna provide you with two more examples now what if uh, let's go ahead and let's close that I'm gonna comment these ones out so you can select them and you had say you can say control slash forward slash it is going to comment them out the same way as we we are used to doing it in Python so let's come down here this is gonna be example number two I'm just gonna bring it up a little so what if you want to grab one column from this database from this table so within the countries what if you just want to grab the country name you do not want to have all the columns then you just write the name of the column country name and then you you have to specify from which uh, table it is so now let's save the file let's run it there you go so now you have selected only the country name you might be wondering how you can let me bring this down a little bit as well you might be wondering how you can select more than one column like two columns then let me just copy this copy that and I'm gonna comment these two parts out let's put that down here this is gonna be I'm gonna be naming examples for the for this lecture and the rest of this course whenever you want to provide uh, another uh, you want to grab or retrieve another column you need to separate the columns you can write them all in one line and separate them using comments so you just have to separate that's the only thing that you need to work so it is region ID let's say you want to grab country name and region ID so comma then you say region underscore ID that's it let's save that let's run it there we go it says country name and region ID here is our table so with this our very long lecture comes to an end I know it's been 23 minutes the reason for that is we covered a lot of stuff I should have probably separated this lecture into two but I'm not going to this is where it is going to end and um, that that's going to be it for this lecture uh, from next lecture onwards because we have we are done basically with the housekeeping stuff and from the next lecture onwards we can really focus on just sql and not like the nitty-gritty itty-bitty stuff so see you in the next one